Welcome back there, students. It's time for a little bit more flip class. Huzzah! Did, did the screen flip? No, I didn't think it did. Virtual Patterson is calling shots that real life Patterson didn't want to make in his editing studio. But anyway, we're going to talk a little bit more about the atomic mass. And then we're going to talk about why on the periodic table you see it as a decimal because that's weird, and there's no like 0 .008 neutrons, is there? Well, you'll find out why that is today. And also, what's going on with like charged and uncharged particles, like from the gizmo and from the Bohr model you used them before. So, let's get on into it. First, as we've discussed before, when we're doing the atomic mass, we round to the nearest whole number. Now, the reason why you round to the nearest whole number is because that's the atomic mass for what we call the most common isotope for an element. You may remember isotope from the Quizlet. If not, here's a reminder what an isotope is. Isotope is any atom of the same element, so we're talking the same number of protons, but has a different number of neutrons. So it's still the same element because that's based on protons. However, it's got a different number of neutrons, so the atomic mass is going to be changed. Any two atoms of the same element with different atomic masses, we call those isotopes. Iso meaning same, and tope meaning... Tope? It's a color, right? Weird. Weird. Anyway, it's not spelled like that. Uh, taupe like type. Same type, same type of atom, different mass. Because we're changing the mass by changing the number of neutrons, we're also changing the size of the nucleus, right? Because we're putting more or less things in the nucleus, so it's going to have a different size. Keep in mind though, as I've said already once, twice, now thrice, does not change the number of protons. If you change the number of protons, now you have a different element. We want to be the same element, so the same number of protons. Let me show you some examples. When we do weird isotopes, in the symbol, you should write the mass up there. However, you might see it spelled out like this, carbon-14, or C-14, C for carbon, and then 14 for the atomic mass being 14. This is carbon-14. It's a radioactive isotope of carbon. We're also going to look at hydrogen-2, which is called deuterium because we discovered it before we were really on to this naming convention, which is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen found in weird water around nuclear facilities. And then we're also gonna look at O18, which is oxygen 18, or oxygen with a mass of 18. Also, radioactive. Are you seeing a pattern? Well, I'd hope so, because there's definitely one in it. A lot of these isotopes, when you add more things into the nucleus, it's going to make your nucleus unstable, therefore radioactive, but that's for another day. First, we've got some pen gaming to do. In order to pen game, we will need our handy, our dandy, our periodic table. So we'll start by finding C carbon. We find carbon. There is carbon, my friend and yours. Yay, carbon. C14. Instead of having 12 for the atomic mass, instead, it's got 14. However, it's still number six, and that's still what we came here for on the periodic table. So we'll come back over to where our pen game is happening. The number of protons for C14 carbon still going to be six. Because there's no charge up here, we still have six negative electrons to balance out those six positive protons, but our atomic mass is 14. So remember, this time, if we put the little six there, we'll take 14 minus six, and instead of giving us six neutrons, like in C12, or regular isotope of carbon, instead, now, we have eight neutrons because 14 of the mass minus six protons equals eight neutrons. So the pen game gets a little bit different when we start looking at different non-standard isotopes. Deuterium, hydrogen two. It's still the very first element. See, there it is on our periodic table, all nice and periodical. One for the atomic number, so we'll come back over here and we'll still put in one 
for our number of protons, because that's our atomic number. One for the number of electrons, because it doesn't have a charge, so we're still balancing them out. However, now because we've got an atomic mass of two, we take two minus our one there, that actually is going to give us one neutron. So we have one neutron in deuterium. I remember we went through a whole thing about how there was no neutron on regular hydrogen, but it's not regular hydrogen, is it? No, it's not. It's deuterium. Dute, by the way, as in deuterium, as in two, as in it's got a mass of two. Let's look at my friend and yours, oxygen 18. You breathe it, you need it to survive, and it's slightly radioactive. There's a bunch of mess, but over here, oxygen. Normal oxygen, we round that up to 16, and that would be our most common isotope. However, we're not dealing with the most common isotope. Instead, we're dealing with its weird friend, oxygen 18. However, atomic number, still an eight, and that's what we went to the table for. So we just very carefully put in our eight there for our atomic number. And that means we still have eight protons. We still have eight electrons. However, when we subtract these two, now we have 10 neutrons, 10 neutrons. So that boys and girls is how you do the modified pen game when you have different non-standard isotopes. You may have noticed that on the FET simulation, you can still make Bohr models for different isotopes. It doesn't have to just be what our most standard isotope is. Remember isotope is where we've got carbon or carbon, still always carbon, but has a different number of neutrons than normal, so it's a different isotope. And that, boys and girls, is the reason why on our periodic table, all these masses, for the most part, are decimals, because they're an average. Hydrogen, 1.008, for the mass, that is because there's a whole bunch of hydrogen two out there, but most of it's hydrogen one. Same thing over here, looking at carbon, there's a little bit of C14, that brings up our mass average over 12, but most of the carbon on the planet is C12 because that mass is super way closer to 12 than 14. Are there other isotopes? You bet your socks there are. However, those are just the ones that you were asked to find so far. What if, though, there's a change to the number of electrons? Oh, interesting, interesting. As we discussed in class and in the video before, the number of electrons are not going to change the mass at all. However, because electrons have a negative charge, they are going to affect the charge. So the charge of an atom will change by changing the number of electrons. Remember, it could change when we change the protons, but then we're also changing the atom. The whole point is here to look at normal elements with non-normal numbers of neutrons and electrons. Because when you change the number of protons, again, changing the element, we will stick with the same element. That's why we're not gonna talk about changing protons. Changing protons changes the element. So what an ion is, you've heard this word before, now we're gonna define it. You also saw it in the Quizlet is any element with a net electrical charge. This term can also refer to full molecules, but we're not ready to talk about charged molecules yet. Let's focus on charged elements. For example, up here, hydrogen plus, that means plus one. Chlorine minus, that means minus one. Iron, two plus. That's how we show it right there. That charge means that we're positive two on the old iron. These right here, moose and squirrel, are ions. So let's look at this example. What happens if we change the number of electrons? So here we have my favorite element. That's right, it's lithium with its sweet three protons. But what if we just took away one of those electrons? Now we've got three protons, but only two electrons. So these pairs will cancel out and that leaves us with a plus one charge. We'd write the symbol of this lithium, Li plus or Li one plus. Usually we just do the plus because the one sort of implied. And then because we're good stewards of our knowledge, we're gonna include the mass up here, which is seven for the three plus four things in the nucleus. And we put our three down there for the atomic number. So here we have the official atomic symbol for a one plus or a positive ion of lithium. Over here, what if we had nine protons? 
But then we added another electron. See that one right there I just added? Now we have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. These pairs will all cancel out and we're left with negative one ion. So this would be fluorine. So you go F minus or F1 minus because it's a negative ion. And because we're good stewards of our knowledge, we'll combine the nine protons and 10 neutrons. So it's got an atomic mass of 19 and an atomic number of niner. So here's the official symbol for negative one ion of fluorine. Yay. The pen game here would be very similar. We again will refer back to our friend, the periodic table. It will remind us that a normal isotope of hydrogen has an atomic mass of one and an atomic number of one. A normal isotope of chlorine has a mass of 35 and an atomic number of 17. And then my friend and yours, iron plus two, iron has an atomic mass of 56 and an atomic number of 26. Then we just do what we've been doing. We play the pen game. One atomic number means we have one proton. However, this plus here means that we have an unbalanced charge. We have one more proton than we do electrons. That means then we have no electrons. What you do here is you just subtract these two, whatever your charge is. So one minus positive one equals zero. That's zero electrons. In the neutrons, we still do the same thing we've been doing. We subtract our mass and our atomic number gives us zero. That's zero neutrons. Oh boy, oh boy, oh joy, oh rapture. Here we go with chlorine. Chlorine has an atomic number of 17, which means we have 17 protons. We take our 17 and we're going to subtract negative one. Oh man, what did he just say? 17 minus negative one. What the devil is this? No worries the youth, remember, change, change. That's 17 plus one, so we have 18 electrons. Or just remember, we've got a charge, so we don't have the same number here. Electrons are negative, that's one more negative, so we've got one more electron. For the neutrons, we do like we've always done. We subtract these two, and we get a number that I apparently could not do in my head, but it's 18. Yay. One more to go, let's have it. Atomic number still tells us exactly how many protons, so it's 26 protons. We take 26, we subtract positive two, so that's 26 minus two. That gives us 24 electrons, or two, two more protons than electrons to give us our positive two charge. Then we take our 56 mass minus 26 atomic number. That tells us that we have 30 neutrons. What's that you ask? Could we have an ion that's also an isotope? Why yes you could, and you will. Be ready. But that boys and girls is how you play the pen game for isotopes and also for ions. Thank you for watching. Woo! It's over. I hope this thing kept recording.